Assalamu alaikum everybody. I'd like to speak on the hypocrisy of South Africa. I would like to speak on the hypocrisy of South Africa and the hypocrisy of BRICS in general. South Africa, while claiming to be pro-Palestine, has economic relations with the Zionist entity. South Africa, while claiming to be pro-Palestine, has economic relations with the Zionist entity. South Africa never decolonized. Apartheid never ended. You have neo-apartheid in South Africa. The Dutch and the English were never extradited back to England or to Holland. And this is because Nelson Mandela was a sellout. Nelson Mandela could have done what Robert Mugabe did. Nelson Mandela could have extradited the English and the Dutch back to their countries of origin. But he didn't because he was weak. Nelson Mandela was a weak man. And that's why Western liberals like West Nelson Mandela. Look at South Africa today. Most black South Africans lived in abject poverty. Most English and Dutch South Africans are wealthy. Again, this is a, a different expression of neo-apartheid, neo-colonialism. That's what it is. So, and, and also the fact that South Africa maintains economic and diplomatic relations with the Zionist entity, that indicates to us that they're not truly pro-Palestine. Their rhetoric on the surface may appear to be pro-Palestine, but South Africa is not fully in support of Palestinian liberation. And this goes on to my next point about BRICS. BRICS and multipolarity is a facade. China is trying to weaponize the Belt and Road Initiative to force Arab countries to normalize the Zionist entity. China is the second largest trade partner of the Zionist entity. Russia engages in trade with the Zionist entity. Brazil engages in trade with the Zionist entity. India engages in trade with the Zionist entity. China is the second largest trade partner of the Zionist entity. And South Africa engages in trade and has economic and diplomatic relations with the Zionist entity. Much like the hypocrites in Ireland, much like the hypocrites in Ireland who claim to support Palestine, but then again, Ireland has diplomatic and economic relations and trades with the Zionist entity. The BRICS countries are a bunch of liberal Zionist hypocrites. Same thing can be said about Vietnam. Same thing can be said about Ethiopia. And Ethiopia has a whole history of Zionist normalization. So when... Diaspora Ethiopians, such as Bethel Ayasu, spout Orientalist and Islamophobic points about Arabs that they learned from people like John Henry Clark. They learned in the, the Orientalist, Islamophobic, imperialist U.S. academia settings. And then you have people like Bin Slacken, the, the, in, the goofball Instagram fashion influencer or whatever. Again, he's Ethiopian. He's a sellout to the Zionists. That's indicative of a greater pattern of behavior, a larger pattern of behavior of Zionist normalization and selling out. South Africa, much like Ethiopia, Russia, India, China, Brazil, Turkey, Azerbaijan, etc., etc., they're all Zionist normalizers. Yemen and Syria have been the two most anti Zionist countries. Iraq has been the third most anti-Zionist country, and after that I would probably say Algeria and Tunisia. BRICS is a facade. BRICS is a liberal, capitalist, Zionist organization. Much like the UN, much like NATO, BRICS must be opposed. You have two faces of, of liberalism and Zionism. The UN-NATO face, and you have the BRICS Belt and Road Initiative face. 
So there you go.